One of the things that I want to do is caps, capture your heart for a minute with this message that the Lord let me preach last Sunday. Anybody was here last Sunday? Anybody? Okay. Those of you that were here last Sunday heard this word, and I'm going to talk about it for a minute, and then I'm going to also uh, elaborate. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to take us a little further with this, and um, uh, real important that we capture what the Lord is really trying to say to us here. And um, I, I really thank God for his word and, and all that um, he's been saying to us lately. His word has been fresh. It's been alive. If you notice that psalm up on that banner there, Psalm 1, verses uh, 1 through 3, uh, that's kind of the theme that we've been using here. You can put it on the board, guys, if you would. And um, Psalm 1, verse 1 through th uh, 3 and uh, this, this is a drive for, uh, for us. We've been talking about uh, a seed. We've been talking about prospering. We've been talking about, uh, we had a series of meetings about the offering that we make a command every time we take the offering. We declare this declaration and we broke it down, what it meant, the strong man and all of that and how uh, we could uh, uh, effectively defend that and uh, but we need to, to gather this in. Psalm 1 uh, and, uh, and, and verse uh, 1 here, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the ways of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. Now hold that. That's one of the ways that you get identified as the blessed. Blessed is the man who does not walk with those other folks. You get identified as a person who's blessed by who you walk with. How many of you know in the gang world, you get identified with who you hang with? So you get identified by who you hang out with. If you hang out with losers, if you hang out with quitters, if you hang out with those kinds of people who are always murmuring, always complaining, then you're not going to be listed as the blessed person because you're sitting amongst the uh, council of the wicked and you're walking with them, you're standing in the way of sinners and you're sitting in the seat of mockers. Those who mock the things of God. Those who make light of the things of God. When you're with them, you are not blessed. Come on. I mean, you know, the Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. And I'm sure you parents tell your children that. And so it is true who you hang with, you will hang with. Amen. Now, take it on a little further. Next one says, but his delight, this person, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or in the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in on his law, he meditates day and night. Day and night, he's meditating on the word. How many of you hear that? And that's real important. Uh, the person who's blessed is somebody who just totally, constantly delights in this book, saints. Reads it and delights in this book. Delights in this book. So when somebody is blessed, it is a person whose delight is in the word of the Lord. And in this word, he thinks on it day and night. How many of you hear that? I was talking to my daughter on the phone yesterday. We were talking about... Uh, a question she had from a biblical place and we were discussing it together and she said, well, I was always raised that way and that's exactly right. That's what I believe. And she was debating with someone else on the word and she wanted to make sure she was on good footing for what she was saying. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that uh, you base your conversations and you base your arguments of life on the word of God. How do you hear that? When I watch the news, I watch it in the framework of the, 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 the emphasis of the fact that my word gives me wisdom, gives me platform to believe and to say what I believe and what I say. How many of you hear that? 
Not the pundits on TV, not any of that, but it's the word. So we meditated on, meditate on it day and night. Next part. Hello? Next part, verse 3. Can we get it to come up? Okay. He is like a tree planted by streams of water. It's on the board there. Which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever he does prospers. Now, first of all, I mentioned to you that that tree that we have up there, these tree paintings up here, it's supposed to be a witness or uh, a picture of words. And it's supposed to tell us that we are to be like trees. You and I are the culmination of, culmination of seeds and we are the seeds of God that God put in out of the loins of his mind. He spoke them into the word and the word in the beginning uh, was with God. So the word being Jesus carried all of us in his loins in the beginning. So at Calvary, we were in the loins of Jesus so that when Jesus died, all of us who accept our salvation, we died also with him. And as he rose from the dead, so are we alive and have risen as well. Have you heard that? And because of the fact that it takes seeds to make the tree, we are part of that. So we are collectively like trees planted. Don't miss the word planted. Because today there are too many today that are not planted. They're only visitors. They're only looking, they say. But they want God in their own terms. They don't intend to plant because when they get planted, they get under requirement. And they don't want requirement because the rebelliousness in their heart leads them to say things that are nonsensical when they say they're just looking. It doesn't mean that. It means they want to do their own thing according to their own will. They want God in their own terms. Hello. Hello. God plants things, saints. How many of you know these beautiful flowers, somewhere they were planted? God plants things. And he planted us on the earth. <clears throat> and he planted us in the river, uh, in the streams of the anointing of God in the church. And that's what's happened. So we're like trees. And it says if you're planted, you're going to yield fruit. And you yield fruit in, in the season. How many of you know that we bear fruit? There's nine gifts of the Spirit, and there's nine fruits of the Spirit. We, get, we bear fruit in our life, okay? And whose leaf does not wither. That means the anointing, the life source in you doesn't dry up. God will keep you alive. How many of you hear that? I thank God that I have been saved 40 some years now and that God's caused my leaf to stay uh, totally alive. How many of you hear that? And uh, my leaf hasn't withered because I've never backslid. I don't look backwards. I look forward. How, about, how many of you hear that? And it says here, whatever the blessed one, not the one hanging with sinners, whatever the one that meditates in the law, whatever he does, what? Can you say it like you mean it? So he prospers. Now, how many of you know that has to do with our soul? Amen? Our soul. And John chapter 1 tells us that uh, we need to prosper and be, uh, one John tells us we have to prosper and be in health even as our soul does prosper. Soul is the mind, will, and the emotions. Soul is the suke. You have the panuma, the spirit of God, and you have the suke. You have the, 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 the uh, uh, carnal soul of man. And the soul of man is what's led through most of the time people's lives till they get born again. When they get born again, they, uh, the spirit of God comes in them and that spirit uh, in you comes alive. And because of that, you are alive, you are born again, and now life is inside of you. The Bible says you were dead in your trespasses. Now you've been made alive. How many of you know you could be living on the earth for years and you're dead? Adam, when he came out of the garden, he was dead, but he was living on the earth for years, hundreds of years. 
And how of you know when the Spirit of God comes into you, it quickens your mortal body and it brings you to life. Aren't you glad for that today? Come on with me today. How many of you are here to hear a word? All right, so God uh, brings you to life. He brings life inside of you and you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And uh, that's important. Now, uh, out of this tree, there's so many examples and things we talked about. And uh, uh, Jesus is even referred to as the branch and uh, we're the vine. There's a rod inside the stem of a tree and that rod is authority. And um, so we need to understand that and we need to know that God sends vine dressers. That's those that he anoints to help make sure the tree is trimmed and kept in good shape and all the bugs are kept off of it. Amen. That's why he sent pastors. Now, we aren't, uh, why aren't we prospering? Why aren't we prospering as it says in the Psalm and everything he does will prosper? Why aren't we prospering? You know, it was just funny. A minute ago, I asked you how many of you uh, wanted to bring somebody to the church and a few hands went up. And that is indicative of many times of why God's people are not prospering because they're not obeying God's word and they're not looking for the opportunities of God to be useful for God, for his kingdom, because they have God and other things. How many of you know he has to become Lord of your life? And if he's not Lord of your life, you will make everything else king of your life. How many of you hear that? People make clothes and fashion and popularity their king. People make uh, all kinds of things their king. And how many of you know Jesus is to be the king of kings? And he's to be Lord of Lords. He needs to be Lord in our lives. We cannot let other things become greater than him. How many of you hear that? When I preached about faith on Friday, Thursday night, faith is the complete commitment to his Lordship that allows you to operate in faith that he has given to you. It allows you to operate in the faith he's put inside of you. But if you don't have faith in God, you won't trust God. You're not committed to God. You're not totally sold out to God. So what happens is you kind of come and go as you feel it is available and comfortable. And how of you know that's no way to live because you become double-minded. And that that double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. Can you hear that? Now, when I look at this, And I think about the fact that you and I have a seed in us and that seed came from creation, from the beginning, and uh, we aren't prospering uh, uh, as we've been coded to prosper. How many of you know when God made the seed, he wrote on the seed everything that the seed was to accomplish? When he made a banana tree, he wrote on the seed banana so that that tree had to produce what the seed was carrying. How many of you hear that? In the natural, you have been impregnated. Your mother was impregnated. And that seed that went into your mother had a code on it. And the code has been broke down, DNA, all that kind of stuff. And the code defines who you are. Isn't that true? And how of you know that we have a code in us because we were born of an incorruptible seed, not a corruptible seed. And the code that was put in us is the code of the anointing of the Holy Ghost of the promise of God. So the seed that's in us uh, is a seed that the Bible says deep crieth out unto deep. uh, And there's a seed in us that bears witness uh, that we are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 tells us that we have been born again. And we have a seed in us that says, I know that I am born again. When you're not born again, when you don't care about church, God, and those things, very likely the seed is not in you or the seed has not been activated. And we need to realize that not everybody will come to Jesus. Matthew tells us that you did this in my name and that in my name. He said, depart from me. I don't even know you. Not everybody that calls him Lord, Lord shall be saved. Hello? Hello? And we need to realize that when God put a seed in us, when that seed of God is in you, you just cannot not 
want God. You can rebel and run, but the hook of God is in your jaw. And like a big old fish, he just draws you back in. I saw a picture on the news yesterday, uh, uh, Friday, uh, of a big marlin being caught. And uh, these guys were fighting this big old marlin fish, and it was jumping. And finally, one pull, it jumped in the boat. It was about 400 pounds. And when it was coming, it came with that long bill, came right at the guy sitting in the chair, knocked him on the floor. And uh, if it had stuck him, it had killed him. And we saw a guy in uh, St. Thomas was fighting a marlin. The fish jumped out of the water, and the bill went right through him and killed him right in his chair. And I thought, boy... That's a saint that had fought a long time and finally just said, I'm getting in the boat, I'm giving up. How do you hear that? So you can run if you will, but the captain's got a hook in you and he's holding on to you. He's going to keep reeling till you get back with God. But if there's no seed in you, you can come to church for 50 years and die and never be saved. Now, I'm talking about why we're not prospering. I, I, I told you last week, Ephesians chapter 1, 3, and 9. Ephesians 1, 3, and 9. Guys, I appreciate it if you put it on the board. Ephesians 1, 3, and 9. Just as God chose the saints in Christ Jesus, or in Christ, before the foundations of the world. Now, for those of you that don't understand the Bible very well, or those of you that might not think that what I'm telling you is a factual thing, then I'm letting Paul, as he wrote Ephesians, I'm letting him tell you. He says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before, say it with me, before the foundations of the world. How many of you know he chose you before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love? So saints, listen to me. You were on the corner of nowhere with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Son being the Word, you were in Him before the foundations of the world. So when God decided that He wanted to make man, He had in His hand seeds, and He coated every one of the seeds, and the seed has your code in it, and when that code comes up, it's time for you to live for the kingdom of God. Have you ever thought it weird that the Bible spent so much time talking about the genealogies. You know, you take, here's the book. It's the book of life, right? It's the book of our hope. And God has, for some reason, put all these pages in the Bible about, you know, he begot he and she begot her and, and names you can't even pronounce. And you read them and go, why do I care about that? It's not telling me how to live. Oh, what it is telling us. It is telling us, saints, that when we are of that incorruptible seed, all the way back from the foundation of the earth, that seed has been coming, multiplying, coming, multiplying, coming, and multiplying. It went right down through Jesse. It went right back through Boaz. It went right back through uh, Rahab, the harlot. It went all the way back till it came until Jesus came on the earth. How many of you hear that? And how many of you know God blesses that, those that have that seed? He favors those with that seed. How do I know that? Two boys are born. Abraham has two sons. He has Ishmael and he has Isaac who got blessed. What happened to Ishmael? He didn't get blessed. Hello? How many of you know? He got blessed. God gave him mercy, but he's not the promised seed. How many of you know Jacob and Esau came out of Isaac? They wrestled. Who got the blessing? Jacob. How many of you know 
uh, David had a whole bunch of brothers, seven of them. Samuel the prophet goes to pray for him. He says, no, there is one that I want who must be the king of Israel. Have you hear this? How many of you know God pre-ordered and predestined uh, those seeds to make it through all of eternity, all of the th times of times till it's on the earth today? Oh, and look, saints, when, when Moses, anytime a deliverer is born, the attack is on. When Moses was born, boom. When Jesus was born, uh, Herod tried to kill him. And when you and I came to the earth, have you ever stopped to realize why did God choose you? Why didn't he choose your brother? Why didn't he save your sister? Why did he choose you? Because the choosings are not of man. They are chosen of God all the way back from the foundation of the earth. And because God shows you in the beginning, you need to own up and say, okay, my seed is the seed of God and my seed has a destiny to move the kingdom of God forward. Anybody listening? And when you play with that seed, you're tampering with time. Still there? Now, the Bible tells us that we are highly favored. You remember uh, Mary comes? The Bible says she was referred to as highly favored. The Lord, the angel of the Lord said, Mary, you are highly favored of the Lord. Isn't that true? Why was she being highly favored? Because a seed had come in her. Isn't that right? How many of you say, Lord, thank you that you've highly favored me? You see, highly favored people are blessed. Look, God took me out of sleeping on cardboard boxes and hiding from the police and he blessed me and he highly favored me and it's not because I chose, it's because he chose. But I ultimately chose what he chose because it became aware to me that I have a seed that is a promise seed, that that promise seed has to do with generations of generations to come to know the kingdom. I don't know if you hear me, but I tell you, this is a great truth. Now, there's levels and reasons we're not growing, we're not maturing, and I spoke about it the other day and I didn't give it to you, so here it is. My wife chastised me. She said, you gotta preach that next week because you didn't give us those four points. Now, there are four reasons that I put down. There's probably 400, but there's four reasons of stunted growth. And then when I get finished with this, I'll finish today's piece just with a little bit more. How many of you understand the word right now? Come on, how many of you are listening today? How many of you know? Look, saints, what I preach here is not for two-year-old babies. I'm not preaching to try to entertain people who don't want God and don't even know the book. There's thousands of people that get this live video stream all over the world. And those people deserve a good message. And you that are hungry and you that have that seed in you, when I preach, it bears witness inside of you that the truth is there. Hello. Now, four reasons of stunted growth. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Just turn there quickly. And uh, this, is, this is just a short little peace for those of you to figure out how you can work in contradiction to that stunted growth, not prospering. How many of you say, Lord, I want to prosper? Come on. Isn't it God's plan for you to prosper? Okay. Chapter 5, verse 11. And it says, of whom uh, we have much to say and how hard to explain since we have become dull uh, of hearing. How many of you hear that? One of the reasons 
One of the reasons that God's people are not, accru- uh, not apprehending the thing they've been apprehended for is we've become dull of hearing. How many of you know the world's music and the world's dialogue is making God's people dull of hearing? How many of you hear that? How many of you know, when you know a voice, the Bible says, you know, Jesus said, you know my voice, the sheep hear my voice, they know it, that kind of thing, Right? How many of you know a mother has a child and that child knows the voice? Isn't that right? How many of you know that I can be somewhere and speak and people will say, I heard, I know that voice. I've heard that voice. Sometimes even little children that have been in the wombs of their parents will come to me and they don't like anybody else, but they'll come right to me. And I usually laugh and say, well, they've been listening to me for nine months. They're used to my voice. There's a certain voice that you listen to that you're used to. How many of you know if you hear a voice on a commercial and you can identify who the actor is on the voice? Because you understand voices. How many of you hear that? But how many of you know what the enemy does? He saturates us with messages that are designed to dull our ability, our ability to sharply, keenly hear the word of God. That's why young people that listen to all the garbage they listen to and nobody filters it out, they are oftentimes not aware that that music is telling them don't love God, don't serve God, sell your body, have sex, do drugs, all of that, and they get bombarded so that when they hear the voice of God, it's dull, it's hard to get that voice in. And then you got the TV and you got the media and you got all of that. And... uh, you know, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody sat with me recently and said, how do you know all that? I was talking to this person and I said, well, and I leaned up and I told him about five or six things that I really did know. And they said, oh my God. They said, you're scaring me. Don't say any more. How many of you know because the Holy Ghost speaks, I know what he sounds like because I listen to him more than I listen to people's voices. So I don't have a music thing in my head. I don't have to try and hear God because I hear God because I don't dull my hearing. Have you hear that? You know, some of you come in here on Sunday morning, you can't hear me. Have you know, the Bible says in Romans that the Jew is blind. They can't see. They can't understand. How many of you know when you don't have the seed of God in you, it don't bear witness. You can't hear it. Hello. Here's the second one. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. It says that we should not have to come back to the elementary principles of Christ. How many of you know one of the reasons that we don't prosper, we're stunted in our growth, is because we're dull of hearing and we refuse to grow up. Look at me today, saints. Time to grow up. I say this all the time. If you've got a 40-year-old living in your house, mom and dad, and you're still paying all the bills, there's something wrong with that. Hello? There's something wrong with that, and you need to figure out what it is. It's not God's plan. How do you hear that? I mean, you know, we need to understand there's a place finally where people grow up. I was glad when my daughter grew up and left. Hallelujah. The only thing is I'm still paying for things. But she did leave. <laughs> and, and saints, we need to understand in the world that we live as, as Christians and as, as God's people, we have to make a conscious decision. It's time to grow up. I was preaching it Thursday night. How many of you want to see miracles happen? I've got to go to Cambodia, to Japan, and to Indonesia in a, in a month. And when I go there, I'm not going there to sightsee. In most of those countries, all I see is the top of heads. I will admit I'd like to eat there. But I'm not going for any of those reasons. I'm going there because God has told me to go. He's anointed me to go. And something good is going to happen. 
I'm going to pray for hundreds of leaders. I'm going to prophesy to them. I'm going to speak the word of the Lord to them. We're going to help them in their building their churches. Because why? Because God is speaking through us to do that. But it's because we grew up. Some of you have remained babies too long. Hello? It's time to grow up. Next thing is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is one of those stunted moments. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I want you to get this one. reason you're not growing sometimes is dull. Sometimes because you won't grow up. And then number 3 is probably the most powerful. Chapter 3 verse 1. And brethren, and I brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as the babes of Christ. Have you heard that? Now, here's what I want you to see. The reason they were babes is one reason. The other reason is they're carnal. How do you know the carnal mind cannot perceive the things of God? Isn't that what it says? The carnal man cannot perceive the things of the Spirit of God. Carnal man. What is a carnal man? A carnal man is the man that's always consumed with this world stuff. Whether it's your work, whether it's your hobby, whether it's your whatever, you're always on the t- topic of the carnal things to satisfy the soul. How do you hear that? Instead of, look, there's very few Christians that I hang out with, and the reason is, is because with the sinners, they lie, and I know they're lying. With the saints, they lie and they want you to think they're not. And most of the time, what I like about it is, I like to hang out with people that sharpen me. Talk about the word. You know, you can can talk and laugh a little bit, but the next thing you know, we're in the middle of, why is God? What is God? Where is God? How is God? What's God saying? What's God doing? Have you heard that? Look, saints, if you're just around people that only want to talk about the other stuff, I'm telling you, those people will drain your tank. Joe called me the other day, Bishop Matera, you know. Man, I like talking to guys like that. You know, sometimes he's an egghead, but sometimes, you know, I tell him, you know, he's just so smart, you know. And so I have to lower his conversation sometimes because he starts talking in hyperphalies and you know he starts making these grand statements and I'm going Joe what does that word mean (laughs) and he goes oh yeah I'm talking to you Bart oh excuse me but thank God we talk about iron sharpening iron we talk about God you're listening to me and then the fourth one is first Corinthians 3 it's right there again I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal, behaving like mere men? That's pretty insulting. For when one says, I'm Paul, and the other says, I'm Apollos, are you not carnal? And, and, and look, saints, one of the things that it, it is a hang-up is carnal things have more to do with philosophy, but material things have to do with possessions. So you can be dull of hearing. You can be babies, and you can be carnal, and you can be so consumed with consumer that you can't find God. And let me tell you, that last one is the reason why God's kingdom is oftentimes suffering. How many of you see when you watch on TV and you see these commercials, or not commercials, but news ads, and you see uh, groups in the inner city trying to raise money for their little nonprofit groups, and they got kids on the street collecting in buckets, and they're out there. I don't think it's God's plan for the righteous to be out begging. But God's church has put the church in that posture because of a poverty mentality that we're not believing for our own prosperity. So then the church has to function out of your lack of prosperity. 
How many of you hear that? How many of you know if every one of you were making the money you should be making because you were praying the prayers of the righteous and ordering those things to come and speaking into life into yourself, you'd be getting raises? How many of you were just up here a minute ago with our hands up? They got jobs. They got increase. How many of you say, Lord, thank you for increase? How many of you believe God is Jehovah Jireh? Well, saints, you know, I believe he wants me to prosper. Hello? You know, I go on a trip like this to Cambodia and those places, and there's no offering. Hello? Many times I go to India, pay my own way. I took, I took an offering in India, took that with me, and gave the preachers an offering so they could come to the meeting of 10 grand. Not from the church, my money. Have you hear that? But you know what happens? Next time I turn around, somebody says, Brother, I just feel, I don't know, but I know your ministry. I just want to do something. Check comes in. Every need he supplies according to his riches. Why? Because I'm busy about his kingdom. I'm operating in his kingdom. I'm doing his work, not just trying to consume. How do you want him to be your source? Think about it, saints. What if every one of you was able to give $10,000 this morning for the offering? Just think. If every one of you could just say, well, yeah, I'll just give a $10,000 check today. That's God's blessed me, so I'll just do that. Every one of you, you know what this church does with its food programs and girls outreach and all the things we've done over the years. What do you think would happen? Oh, but yeah, wow, well, preacher, get a new car. Shut up. I can get any car I want to get, not because of this church. If you think I base my life on a poverty-minded thing, you're crazy. I build my life on the fact that my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches. I built my life not on the fact that I have to wait for somebody's offering. I go to churches and preach and give them the offering. Amen. Hello? That has never been my need. I don't have to have that need because God made me a blesser because I read Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who delights in the law of the Lord, meditates it on day and night. I believe what God says. I believe he wants to prosper us. I believe he wants to make us the head and not the tail. So I live that. How about you? Have you said, I want to give $10,000 off? Oh, my God. See, if you don't want it, you don't expect it, you don't believe for it, you have whatsoever you say. Well, why do I care if I give a $10,000 offering? Saints, how many of you think Al-Qaeda spends a lot of Bin Laden's money still? Look, nobody talks about it. But that terrorist was worth $300 million. And we think he was just a lowly little boy, a little Muslim living in a cave. That was a ripoff artist who had over $300 million in the bank. Some we, we froze, thank God. He wasn't no poor guy. When he wanted to order new missiles, he paid for them from North Korea. Hello? And yet the church sends out missionaries that have to live off of a few things because we're going to make sure we keep them humble. That's a lie from the spirit of hell. Let's send you, keep you humble. ha. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm saying to you today? We got to change the way we think, don't we? How many of you say, Lord, help me, forgive me for being so greedy, so stingy. Help me, Lord, to see that if I'm blessed, the kingdom's blessed. How many of you know that the only way the kingdom's ever 
going to have the impact God wants it to happen, have, is if we grow up, stop being dull, stop living carnally, and stop being possessed by possessions, and begin to believe God's word. Now, let me end up with this today. You still with me? Let me see your hand. How many of you would like to give $10,000? Let me see your hands. <laughs> Those of you, your hands are up, not up, you're a liar. <laughs> Ain't nobody don't want to give $10,000. I didn't tell you you had to. I didn't say you're going to do it today. How many of you want to give? Well, there's something wrong with people that don't want I mean, to the SPCA, how many of you want to give 10,000? I mean, something. How many of you want to give $10,000? Well, sure. Let me ask you this. How many of you want $10,000? Same liars. I'm not, I don't want to raise my hand. I'm not give. <laughs> Come on, saints. You see the games we play? No wonder God can't bless us. I used to say, Lauren, when I first got saved, I gave everything I owned, everything I had, gave it to the church. And I said, Lord, help me. One day I want to give $1,000. One day. I don't think it was very long. Somehow I got $1,000. And I looked at it and I went, wow. I can pay this bill and I can do and I heard this silence. Have you ever heard silence? Mike, you're married. Have you ever heard silence? Husbands, have you ever heard silence? Okay. Silence is, is powerful, isn't it? Us men understand that. And I heard this silence because God was being silent. And then I knew, oh, you said you would I said, would you? Oh, Lord, you have. So I gave it away. And you know, the Lord has blessed that so many times, saints. Here's the key. Let's go back to the seed for a minute that's in the tree and where you and I are in the tree. Placement is everything. The power of anointing is in the power of alignment. The power of the anointing is in the power of alignment. How many of you hear that today? The power of anointing is in the alignment. How many of you want to get aligned with God? If you're not in an alignment, you know people that have back problems, you know, their back gets out of alignment and they have a hard time, don't they? They can't walk right. They have bulging uh, disc and things. It's because their body gets out of alignment. You see, when you're out of alignment with God's intention for your life, then there's no flow through your life. How many of you hear that? How many of you want to get things straightened up so you can get in alignment so the blessing can come? Psalm 133, verse 1 through 3, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for uh, brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity talks about that whole thing about alignment. Say, Lord, thank you for an alignment. I thank you for this alignment today that you're aligning us. Amen. Now, the early church in, in Jerusalem knew this alignment. Proper alignment is how we operate in proper anointings. Proper alignment is what causes us to have a mind change toward prospering. I just was speaking to you a minute ago. You got to change your mind. How do you hear that? How many of you know you got to change your mind about money? Isn't that true? How many of you have ever had an issue, don't raise your hands, that you were in your life maybe overeating and you wanted to change it? You had to do something to change, didn't you? You said, I, I got to change. I'm, I'm getting oversized. I don't like the way I feel, whatever the reasons. What happened in that process, you had to change your mind, didn't you? Before you could change your food or habits, you had to change your mind. Do you hear that? Your mind has to change first, then you'll change your habits and you'll change everything else around it. Are you there? Now, look at this. The early church in Jerusalem had great power because they had something that we have to have 
for this alignment. They had relationship. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. You want to put it on the board, guys? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 tells us something. Tells us that we have to get something in a line. How many of you say, Lord, I'm going to get my relationships in line, right? Relationship with my wife, relationship with my husband, relationships in, in every area. Now, uh, I believe very strongly in this, this point here is what caused the early church to be such a blessed group of people. Watch it. Now, the multitude of those who believed, first of all, what did they do? Say it out loud. What did they do? See, you got to believe. If you're not, you don't believe that God is, then you won't believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you got to believe that he is. So the multitude of those who believed were of one heart. That's the first thing. One soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Okay, next verse, guys. And, and, and if you look at this, if, if you really grasp this, look at verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. What was the word? Have you know that that unity, that getting in alignment brought a blessing on everybody? Have you hear that? How many of you know that the blessing that we want to see in the church is the same blessing on all that's in the church? How do you hear that? God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your business. He wants to bless your work or he wants to bless your skills of your hand. He wants to bless your home. He wants to bless your children. He wants to bless us, but he wants to bless us. How do you hear that? And one of the things is they gave great witness. That's the reason I said about bringing people to the church next Sunday is the ability for you to give great witness. How many of you know I had people call me this week? They ran into people. They, led, they talked to people about Jesus. They got financial increases this week. They got uh, healed this week. Uh, people got all kinds. You're driving a new vehicle this week, right? Good for you, girl. I, I told him, get you a new car. Okay. And uh, hey, you know, God's blessing. Come on. How many of you know that the Lord is blessing? We should be witnessing of that. Right? We should all be testifying. You know what the Lord did for me? You know what the Lord did for me? Uh, what was it? Tanasia the other night was blabbering, telling me, I mean, blabbering her, you know, she was just going on and on. She had a car broke down and she said to her husband, no, don't worry about it. Just get in and start it. It's going to go. I got to do this. She did this and that thing started. And then her husband, I think, or somebody said, well, if you turn it off, it's not going to run again. She said, no, it's going to run. When I get home, I'm going to turn it off. And it's going to run because God's going to do something. And boom, the car's still running. How many of you know that God honors faith? Come on, saints. What's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? Doubt and unbelief? Are you in alignment so that we're together being blessed? Do you know what it's like to be in a boat with three or four people that have to row and only one's rowing? Anybody been in a boat with anybody, just one person, and you had two oars? Anybody ever done that? Okay. How about a canoe or, or a, a kayak? We had them out yesterday, right? The kayaks were everywhere. They were out in the water like crazy. And uh, how many of you know that when you're in that kayak or that canoe, if the guy on the right or left ain't oaring, what does the boat do? It goes in a circle. And I mean, can you imagine what church could be like if we all came in here, prayed up, full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, declaring the promises of God, uh, witnessing to the grace of God, the increase of God, uh, and testifying how good God is. Do you know what church would be like? But what happens is you get a few that just want to sit on their hands and look like they've got an attitude and they want everybody to know they do. So we're paddling like crazy, and they're going, I ain't paddling. I, I want everybody to know I'm not paddling. Well, shut up. You're making me tired. I'm going to find Jonah. I'm going to call a whale. 
hey, Earl, come up here. Swallow this guy. Might as well paddle by myself than to have somebody just sitting in the boat. Come on, saints. How many of you know in the family, you want the husband, you want the wife both paddling? How many of you know in the family, you want the husband, the wife, and the children paddling? Because if you got everybody paddling, the boat's going somewhere. Anybody listening to me today? Have you know that when we try to live in this world of ours so selfishly, so selfish, and we say, well, that's not, that's not. You get in my boat and say, that's not my duty. I put Fred in my boat. When he got in my boat, we handed him a pole. We told him what to do. Hand him a rope. Told him what to do. I took Drew out. Believe me, I almost called a whale in on him. Because <laughs> when we're fishing, we're fishing for big fish. We're, we're out there. I'm going to be fishing soon for marlin. They caught 180 of them the other day. White marlin. We'll catch 10, 15 at a time. Big fish. Big. Mucho grande. But trust me, when we're hooked up on that fish, everybody's got a job. Hello? How do you know the NFL is right now trying to find out how to get rid of 20, 30 players off each team that ain't Oren? Hello? How do you know when you got a baseball team like the Orioles and you got a player that ain't Oren? Watch the stats. Ain't long for somebody traded. What If they'd only tell the truth, why'd you trade that valuable player? We traded a guy named Bart Scott years ago, and everybody was freaking out. Bart Scott ain't playing football. He don't even play anymore. He's an announcer. Huh? Oh, wise, he's a wise fella. If you ain't Orn, you ain't on the team long. Come on, saints. How many of you say, Lord, thank you? for this kingdom that I'm a part of. I have a seed in me. Lord, I'm destined to succeed. I'm supposed to be the head, not the tail. I have all the promises of God, which are yea and amen. And I know that I can apprehend the thing I've been apprehended for. And I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, a righteous man, a righteous woman, supposed to be in charge of what, what's going on and be able to move angels uh, and dispatch them on behalf of the kingdom of God. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a soldier. I'm a mighty man, a woman of God. I can do great exploits. Amen. No, I'm just going along for the ride. I want everybody to know I'm a bummer. Life's terrible, and I want everybody to know it. Why not come in? Say, I don't know anything, but I'm going to be happy today. Come on. I'm glad I got saved. I don't know about you. Whew. Deep crieth out unto deep. When the Bible speaks of one accord, one heart, one mind, one soul, one place, and singleness of heart, it's describing proper relationships. Things that are in proper alignment are always in proper relationships. And I'll just close today. I got another five hours there, so I'll give you grace. How many of you understand you got to have a relationship with him? Hello? You don't have a relationship with him, it's a game. You got to have a relationship with him. You got to have a relationship if you're married. You got to have that relationship going on. My best friend and I were out there yesterday having fun. We were the clown of the moment. We were out there in the water, and we were uh, on a little thing called a jet ski. And we were flying around laughing, and I turned it off for a minute in choppy water. And the next thing I knew, she was in the water and I was in the water. <laughs> it flipped right over, and it flips right back. And we were just came up, my glasses were on, my hat was still on. <laughs> crawled, back, crawled back up on it, and away we went. Just laughing, having a good old time. Why? Because we have life. Why? 
because we have relationship. She prayed, I prayed. I didn't pray about not rolling off. I just prayed be safe. Hello? You got to have relationships, saints. If you get in alignment, you got to get a relationship with him. And I, I tell you right now, this is such a great house, a great place of faith. There's a great anointing. The presence of God is in here. For you to have faith is easy in this house. It's easy to believe God. Because there's a faith message here. Oh, yeah, I know I preach strong. And I know I say things that kind of step right on toes. But I'd rather offend you than bury you. <laughs> Some of you just, uh, uh, I'd rather offend you to tell you the truth. How many of you want a relationship with him? How many of you want a relationship with your friend, your, your wife, your husband? And then you've got to have a relationship with each other. And that's why the message for this year was together. Hello? That's your sister. Who's that girl beside you? Yeah. Your daughter. Lord Jesus, you can't have a daughter that old. Hi, daughter. Have I met you before? Really? When the kids were just born, that's like 100 years ago, man. They are now walking around. They're big kids. How do you understand that the body that was in the Acts Scripture was a body that got in right relationship? And you got to get in relationship. Hello? I'm going to talk about relationship with the shepherd. See, we made that all messed up. I've got to have a relationship with the pastor. Sheep have relationship with sheep. Hello? And shepherds hang around and talk about the sheep all the time. They sit there by the fire at night and say, which one should we eat tonight? It's true. Why are you laughing? It's true. The shepherd sat on the side of the hill and said, which one should we eat this week? Oh, let's, that one over there, it's a knucklehead. That one's running off all the time. That's good. Let's go ahead and get him. We'll eat him tonight. But how do you know the sheep are over there going, bah, help us out. Sheep have to have relationships with each other. Have you hear that? That's how you get in alignment. And that's how the anointing comes in the church. Are you ready for that? Stand up together. Reach over and take the hand of somebody. Take somebody by the hand. Take somebody by the hand. I thank you, Lord. Boy, if I could sing, I'd sing. I thank God for his goodness. Lord, thank you for that ones whose hand I hold on the right and on the left. Lord, I thank you that it's not just bones and sinew and muscles and blood that I hold, but God, I hold a seed. I hold a seed that was promised all the way back from the beginning. Lord, ancient of days, the ancient one, so so fit that the seed that was in the beginning made its way through Calvary and made its way as a scattered seed to reach right into your soul. So the angel of the Lord could say to you, highly favored of the Lord. Blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. I bless you. 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 Oh, say to the hand that you hold, you are blessed. You are a blessed hand. You're a blessed hand. You're a blessed hand. 
You're a blessed hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you today for the anointing and the blessing that is over this house. We're a blessed people, God. We came in blessed, we're going out blessed. Thank you, Lord. You're bringing people together, one accord, one mind, one soul. Ha. Oh, I laugh in the face of the devil. The devil says that black people and white people can't get together. Brown people and yellow people and black people and white people can't get together. What a lie! With our God! We're of an incorruptible seed! And the seed has no color! The seed is not racist. The seed of God is not divided. The seed of God is anointed. There's an anointing flowing through your hand right now. Don't make anything happen, let something happen. Just let something flow like a river. Let it flow from the right to the left. Let it flow. God, thank you for the anointing. Lord, thank you for the anointing. Let it flow, God. Let it flow right across the room, Lord. Uh, let it flow like an electrical charge. Uh, let it move across this room, oh God. You make us one, Lord. You make us one people. One people, God, with an anointing. What could we do? What could we do as a people? We can win a city. We can change nations. We can stop the fiery darts. We can set captives free. We can loose the bands of wickedness. We can set at liberty those that are bound. We can do those mighty exploits. We can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. We can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Ah, what a church. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you. As you prepare to give today, I just remind you, the ushers come and get themselves. I remind you to do this, saints. What could you do? How many of you said, I'd like to give 10,000? Remember that? I pray. I pray that God would so bless you that your tithes would be 10,000. I pray that you'd be so blessed that everything you touched would be blessed. Not cursed, but blessed. I pray. I pray. How many of you say today, Lord, thank you. You have made me a blessing. 
How many of you feel blessed today? How many of you glad that you're blessed today? There's a seed in you, and that seed belongs to God. And God wants the dividend of that blessing. He wants the fruit that's supposed to bear out of that seed. So today, I want you to say, Lord, thank you for this offering. I'm blessed, and so I'm so blessed, I'm gonna bless the kingdom of God. I'm gonna bless the kingdom of God. I'm gonna bless the kingdom of God. Because I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm, can you say it with me? Say, I'm so blessed. I mean, just say it like, you know, I'm so blessed. With a little bit of attitude, you know, like, just, I'm so blessed. Some of you, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm going to tell somebody. I'm, a, I'm so blessed. You know, I like hanging out with you because you're so blessed. I do. I like hanging out with people that are blessed. I mean that. I like being around blessed people. How many of you say, I'm blessed? Just put your nose up at the devil and say, I'm blessed. Father, thank you today. Lord, may somehow our words work into the hearts of your people to become a reality, a walk of faith, that every day they increase by what they sow, they increase by what they do, they increase by what they say. May we say we're blessed, may the works of our life model that statement. I bless your people today as they will give their best to you in Jesus' name. Before you do, be still, hands down, heads bowed. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, he's here to save you today. He will save you right now. If you don't know him, all you have to do is say, Pastor, I don't know the Lord. Please help me. I want to get saved. You slip your hand up. I'll pray with you right where you stand. Just hold it up and say, it's me, Pastor. I want the Lord in my life. Anybody in the room at all. I don't want to miss you. I'm looking quickly. I don't want to miss you. Okay. That's what I appeared to be. All right. Amen. I see that hand, sweetheart. That's a good hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hold it up so I can see it. Father, thank you. Bless this young lady, Lord. Come down, sweetie. They'll talk to you. Darlene, just walk with her around on that side or prayer room or something. Amen. Bless her, Lord. Do a miracle for her. Isn't the Lord good? Yes. You still happy? Yes. Are you still blessed? Yes. Don't tell me you lost your blessing in two minutes. All the blessed of the Lord come and bless the Lord. Huh? Declaration? Oh, oh. One person wants it. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. I repent. And renounce. Every sin in my life. I renounce every spell. Every hex. Every demonic invocation. And I revoke. Every satanic prophecy that's operating in my life. I also reverse every divination, enchantment, working in my life, my family, my business, and all that concerns me. In the name of Jesus, remember you have the legal right to use that name. I bind a strong man and all of his agents and I break every curse enforced against me. I break curses of destruction, sickness, premature death. I break curses of poverty, lack, debt, insufficiency. Boy, in the name of Jesus, 
I exercise dominion and authority over the strong man operating under any curse in my life. And I release my inheritance from the strong man. I declare, I declare, I am redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. And I loose myself and those of my household from all curses and their effects in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah! Come on, bring your best. turn my mic off completely. There you go. Thank you for bringing it back on. I appreciate that. Um, one of our friends, our brothers here at the church passed away and I didn't nobody remind me and I didn't see it anyway. Uh, Wednesday, August the uh, 28th uh, at uh, the viewings at March Funeral Home on North Avenue from four to eight. And then Thursday, the 29th, there's a funeral here services here the wake is here at 10 30 services at 11 and it was uh carlos williams y'all see his picture up there and uh maybe it's too bright you can't see but uh carlos uh struggled a little bit in life but had a long period here with us that uh was an overcomer was doing much better in life and uh and uh somehow he slipped away from us and uh so his uh, funeral will be here thursday at 10.30 and 11 o'clock, wake at 10.30, okay? So if you knew him and uh, you were a good friend of his, uh, come and stand with that family and support them, okay? All right? All right, praise the Lord. Would you reach out again and let's pray. Father, thank you. Lord, we bless this offering. We thank you for it. We thank you for the gifts. Lord, use it for your kingdom to go forward. May we realize these messages, Lord, uh, are affecting our lives for the eternal future. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Turn to somebody else before we sing that song and say, you're going out blessed today.